that in. So this is uh, what I want to do, but I'll do it again on, on a different note. Um, so previously, just a recap, um, you we did, and, and you know how to do the stats explore. It's mostly showing you the, st the some tables and critical statistics, and you can examine the missing value, you know, situation very quickly. Uh, using graph explore, you can create custom graphs, and those graphs are linked on underlying data, right? So you, if you click one bar, those data will show up highlighted in other bars as, as linked. Uh, transform variables are very, this node is very helpful to quickly browse the distributions without having to generate those individually. Uh, Multiply is good if you want to make interlaid um, hit bar graphs or histograms of all the variables at once. And then you can scroll through on all the graphs. So all of these are, are, are useful in their own right. And this binning has its own purpose. So um, what purpose does, or what uh, problem can it solve more effectively? So let me uh, demonstrate the problem here. Um, one question you may have in exploratory analysis is you know, simply trying to figure out or, or visually estimate the, the, the association or relationship between one input and the target, right? That's, that's mostly what you're trying to do in, um, in understanding the data in hoping to inform your model building, right? In the model building, a critical question is, which variable do I keep? Which variable do I focus on? Which variable should I not leave out? Definitely, because that is an inform informative variable. And uh, exploratory data analysis serve uh, part of that purpose. So given an interval variable, let's say, like, uh, you know, day means, day minutes, the number of minutes that's used by a customer, and, and try to figure out how is that variable related to churn. So think about how w you would use graphs to, to inform you. you know, from previous classes, um, the most, uh, almost the most you can do is generate a histogram, and then try to color code the, the churn churn event, right? So that would be already part of the graph that you can get from Multiplot. So you can take a look. And that would be similar to if you were to make that uh, graph um, in Graph Explorer, you know, to, to make that the custom graph of day means and then use the churn result to, to interlay to you know, interactively show those uh, churned versus not churned of each bar. So here, one of these graphs is going to be about the date or day cause would be similar. Let's see, let's choose day means, okay? Um, so this graph shows a histogram of day means and color coded by churn event. And the uh, uh, red color is churn. It's a minority of the, uh, the, the two situations, right? N the percent of churn is minority, percent of non-churn is majority. But then the, the purpose here is to, to, try to try to conclude visually whether or not this variable is at all correlated with churn, right? Um, so you would look at the percentage, the relative percentage, right, which is a, an estimate for the likelihood. The relative percentage of the red bar of each of the entire bar, right, and see if the relative percentage changes according to somewhat clear pattern across the bars, right? But as I said, with the bars having different lengths, it's kind of hard to, to visually, you know, estimate, if not 
have an impression, you can have an impression, but that's, that's only rough impressions. It's hard to say. It, it would be better, it would be better if the bars can be normalized the same length, then you can see clearly the percentage differences. Uh, unfortunately, um, a lot of the softwares don't do that. Um, but you can also use pie chart, as I said. Pie chart can normalize uh, the scale for all the categories. But how, think about how would you, how you would use the pie chart for all these different bars. It becomes, you know, just a page for, a, a page of pies. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of domino all over the place, a domino pizza, you know. Um, so th that might not work very well, and you have to organize the, bar uh, the, the pies. Um, so in this case, uh, would, it be, would it be helpful um, if we can have fewer bars here, right? How would you have fewer bars? If we have fewer bars, it might help help us uh, better see the trend, but how would you do a f do fewer bars? Uh, one way is to you know kind of you know, try to try to uh, change the property of the um, histogram. But if you change the bar uh, ranges, they they always have to be be the same. You know, if you increase the range of the bars, then for, for the first bar versus the second bar, you have to have the same ranges. You know, those bar, bar length has to, have, has to be kept uh, similar, or the same, exactly, for histogram. Um, but in this case, you might want to have more control in terms of the ranges that you create the bars. Right? So you can put more cases um, for the bar that represents the lower ranges. You know, instead of, so if you combine the th these three bars, and these three bars, these three bars, you can do that. But again, these three bars don't make a very long bar to see clearly. You might want to combine seven of these bars, but only keep two of these bars together to, you know, help you see a sort of a relative length, you know, a normalized length. Even though you have different number of cases in each bar, the percentage won't change, I mean, uh, the percentage will indicate what you are looking for. That's not absolute values. So that's where the interactive binning can help you, right? So let's, uh, let's, do, let's take a look at how, how to do that. Uh, interactive binning would be maybe close to either explore or modify, let's see. Interactive binning, it's modify. Um, yeah. Here. So just drag that over to any point. Um, maybe, yeah, after the multi plot. Okay, um, there's something we need to change right away. Yes, you want to apply it to interval variables. Apply level rule. Because the date day means is an interval variable. Let's see, method. I want to use buckets. So we want to uh, we uh, want to save some workload and, and have SAS do some initial work for us. So we want SAS to, exactly like the previous graph, we want SAS to pre-bin into several, into a, a large number of uh, categories, like 20. Then we combine some of the 20 together. So it saves some time. Other than you have to specify specifically the first range, second range, and third range. And we want a large number here. So that's good. Under 
You got that? The first part? The three, you know, we have to change the three, all of them, for interval variables. Underscore um, variable selection method. We want to select by name, but not some other statistic. So change that to none. Change the variable selection method to none. So that's, that means you want to do manually. You don't want some automatic mechanism to help you. And that's it. I think um, should run. Yeah, I will use um, I will use the daemon as the example. So, um, so what is it doing? It's it's changing the beans. You're customizing the beans and interactively based on some you know results that you can see after binning you can see how it changes and then you can adjust sometimes you, you know you think binning these five would uh, be good but after binning it, it's not what you're looking for so maybe you add one more bar in it so it becomes six bars instead of, instead of five five bars so you can interactively change and adapt and after you're done um, the um, this this node will create a new variable for you, which is the customized binned variable that has those uh, bars as represented by different labels. So it become it become a or sort of you you created you would have created a nominal variable based on an interval variable. That that makes sense. And then you can do something on the uh, nominal variable. So let's see. I think under variables and we need to specify um, based on what to um, to to bin. We need to you need to change most of these to none but only keep a few of them so let's do this you can select all the all of them and change the no but then you need to make sure turn is yes wait no I have to deselect I have to deselect it uh, Click the name, and it's deselected. And make sure the turn is yes. And then we're gonna look for day means. Where's day means? Default. Right. So make sure you have everything else is no. A lot of clicking. <laughs> I know. Well, let me show you. Um, if you want to do a, a batch change, you click the first name and click the other name, which would uh, have included all everything. Before you click the the tail, so that's a head. Before you click the tail, you, you hit, you hold shift, and then click another one. So it's everything is, is selected. Then. Whatever you change, it will become the same for for the rest of it, for everything. Right, so that uh, that helps. Uh, uh, and then after after you're good, you select one of the other, and it will clear the selection. Okay, let's do uh, update path. Good. All right. What is it? Uh, we need to go to interactive binning then. That's the second uh, ellipse. A record table. Uh, it may have to be run again. Yeah.
Something's not working. Oh, I didn't have my game mates variable, but because I think I changed it to the previous one. So. Or you can you can change it to a different variable. Oh. Okay. If you see a night mate or oh, okay. it should work similar. Right, and try to click in interactive binning. Great. Everybody's here if, if you're following. Yeah. Great. Now, we're working on this, and there's only one variable because we only retain this. And for churn, churn is the target, so it's not going to show up here. So, let's see. So, we don't need to change anything here. Groupings, okay. So based on uh, 20 uh, bins, this variable is pre-binned, right? So you have 20, 20 categories created from small to large, because this is interval variables. There's a natural sorting, right? The smaller values is a s smaller bin is smaller ranges. Do you also have 21? Yeah. yeah. And one has no bar. It's kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know why. Oh, there is a miss. Uh, there is missing ring for this variable. That makes sense. Great. Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, group one is miss. Yeah, it doesn't even have any value. Group. Group three is kind of also missing because there's a gap between those values, and because we specified tw twenty beans, right? So there's a gap, and th there's a like missing bean, a bean of missing, a bean of no values uh, in that range. <laughs> Language. <laughs> um, okay, so here, all of these grayed out areas are uh, information for you. So it tells you for these pre-binned categories um, what are the cutoff values and they are summarized in the value title, sort of label. So these are the labels and these are group group number. Um, so here you can do something. Um, let's see. How we want to change? Yeah. So if I I see that from groups two to seven, there are pretty there are, there are, uh, it's, there are few cases in those categories, and I want to analyze the percentage. I want to compare the percentage of, of churn in those ranges as versus the higher range of uh, day means. So I would like to combine several of those beans together to make a longer bean. So I, I uh, the, the overarching binning strategy here is I want to have a small number of categories. So I only want three categories in the end. So I want to retain those center values in a big bean and the left tails in one bin and the right tails in the third bin, right? So I would uh, want to in include fewer pre-binned categories in the center because they are highly represented. If I include too many bins, it's going to explode. The bar is going to be too long, right? So, you know, by looking at these bars, I decide to use four of them in the center or maybe even three or four. They are, they are not too bad, they are not too long, relatively, but they are still long. So I may include maybe these four bins as, uh, as one uh, bin after I rebin it. And maybe I want to also include this one. Because relatively, I want to make sure that the, the number of cases are similar after I rebin them. I want those on the left to add up similarly to those uh, highlighted 
and those highlighted to add up similarly to, 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 to those on the right. right? So these five bars look okay to me. They, they look like one third of the cases. Does that make sense? Right. So these are from 11 to 15. So I would select these five. Oh, yeah? What if you did seven? Like um, 21, you have 21 and you want to make three bars, so like... If you do seven per bin? Bins. No, seven um, bins per... Yeah, per se one. Right, right. Seven bins per uh, big bin, mm -hmm. right? Um, of course. Uh, so that would mean that you will you, you cut the range equally into three yeah. into three uh, ranges. Is that what you want to do? Um, that's not what I want to do because I want to, uh, instead of having equal ranges of each bin, I want to have the equal number of cases going into each bin. Yeah. Um, but that said, um, your method would provide a, a, a different result or a different perspective to, to look at results. So let's do this first and then we'll see what utility it provides. Um, Select those five beans under this list. Even though you select here, it won't select automatically under, you know, under these rows. From 11 to 15. So, yeah, I have five of them. Alarm. Yeah, flash flood. Um, so. Uh, after, it, it may seem like you, you don't have any ability to change any of these uh, bins because, you know, you can't change, there's no click, uh, there's no drop down menu. But you do have some options here. So you can do this. You can right, right click. And you can merge bin. All right, let's do that. Now you have a, a very long bin. So this uh, new 11, uh, number 11 bin, includes all five uh, small bins uh, previously. So now we, I, I want to include everything except the first one. Uh, everything to the left of 11 to be in the same bin. Um, would it, it won't change, well, it will change the number, well, missing. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and, and th there are still some questions remaining in, in terms of the missing. If there's missing, there should be a bar. But why is there not a bar, right? Um, that might require some more, you know, look into. But uh, right now, let me... Let me skip that because I don't think it's affecting anything. So I'll uh, combine this bin. Almost, almost similar. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Uh, from bin, fourth bin to the last, or even the last don't have anything. Oh, it does have. Right. So let me uh, merge this bin. Great. So the three bars are relatively similar. You could have done it differently, right? And would give you a, a some, somewhat different look right, after the binning. But I, I think the important thing here is to catch the trend. It's not about the trivial sides. Right, uh, you understand the purpose, and you do it res res relatively reasonably, and you, you'll you'll get the same res get the same conclusion, if not the same exact result. Um, on the right hand side, you have the new bin numbers, and the, the number of cases in each uh, new bin. On the left, uh, you notice some new things. Right, it's color coded. It clearly shows, even though the color don't make don't help too much. But the, the width of the bins are different. That shows you 
you know, what's the range that you included. The center bin has the smallest range just because there are more observations there, right? So back to Alice's method, I if you can imagine that you um, keep the ranges same, then you would see the three colors have the same length, mm -hmm. but then very different height. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So my purpose is to keep them relatively similar. Well, that's, uh, that's one I try to do. Okay, um, I think we're almost done here. We can uh, save. Where's the save button? Apply. There should be a save. Right. New group, save. Or maybe, um, maybe it doesn't require saving. It's already saved. Yeah, when you close it, it asks you if you want to save it. Oh, it does? Yeah. Good. Right now I have to close so, close. Yeah. So, would you like to save? Definitely. Okay, uh, I think it requires running again. Yeah. Short title, graphics. And you save. Yeah, let's just run it on the safe side. Good. Uh, and you know, to, to be safe, you can always check the results and make sure something is created. Um, day means, based on the import variable, day means a new variable grouped. Day mean is created. It has four values. The first va label doesn't have any observations. The other three represent the three categories. All right, and then I will use another graph explorer. After the interactive bin two, and first thing you know, always remember the first thing to change is the sample. Uh, make sure you have everything. You go random and max. So in this case, you can, you do, I think you do have to run before you can generate the graphs. Okay, we won't go into it because the, uh, we don't want to look at the uh, default graph that it generates. We want to make our own graphs. Um, well, see, yeah, I do have to go in, and then let's. So now I have a new variable, right? Grouped day means, and I want to do um, a graph. I already have a churn graph here. I want to do a bar chart for the new variable. So let's do it. I do a bar chart. Um, later we'll do a pie chart. For now we'll do a bar chart. We can do you can do horizontal or um, vertical. It's it's same. Um, let's see. We have a new variable, right? So. Let's see. Uh, I think it's a uh, group, group, category, group, and turn. Let's see. Is it group or category? Category. Oh, we'll see. Turn as category. So the color is the rebind day means. 
I would prefer the other way. Or we can change it afterwards. Um, for now, we can look at this graph. So the two bars represent two outcomes. The shorter bar is, are, are those who churned. The longer bar are those who didn't churn. Um, and the colors of the bars are different bins. Two meaning they have smaller numbers, smaller values for day min, right? So they make fewer calls during, or they talk less during the, during the, <laughs> during the morning, during the day. And for the, for the blue ones are, they talk a lot uh, during the day. A question? Uh, yes, huh? was uh, churn, the role was a category? I, I, I think I selected category, but you may want to do it the other way. The group, yeah. That's what I'm going to do uh, in a minute. But for now, so the and the the three colors are kind of sorted um, in a way to to make it easier to to read. The uh, the higher values are 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 toward the left. The lower values are toward the right. So they talk less on the right. They talk more on the left. So then you look at the uh, relative percentages uh, of the three colors in each of the bar and try to interpret the correlation. Um, the first thing you uh, you know want you know uh, want to read is are the relative bars similar across the two outcomes? Not definitely not similar, not uniform at least. If it were uniform, the three colors should be equal close to equal length in the second bar. But you do see that the red color is more represented in the non-churn group, right? So, you know, the way you interpret th this, so there is correlation here going on, right? And the way you interpret, given this, pie, this bar chart, it, it's not optimal to make that kind of conclusion based on this bar chart. You want to flip the two rows that would be easier, right? But here, um, you see more representative of the red bar and green bar in the non churn category. That means this, um, these values of the day means contribute less to churn because they are more represented in the non churn category. Does that make sense? So less they talk during the day, less they likely to Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, this, 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 this chart does give you some difficulty to read. So let's switch the rows. So I'll, I'll do another bar chart, uh, horizontal as well, but then use turn as group. So x axis is the length, it's the frequency. Y axis is the uh, day mean. Now this would be relatively easier. Um, the colors are now the outcomes, and the three bars represent the number, uh, you know, level of day means. The higher the the higher the value, the uh, the more the minutes, right? So, do you see uniform um, uh, percentages? It's not in category four. It's almost forty five fifty uh, forty five fifty five, right? The percent of churn is the highest when they talk more, right? And the percent of churn becomes much smaller when they talk less. And these two categories are kind of similar in percentage-wise. Kind of similar, there are still differences. The second bar is much longer, but the proportion of red are still similar to the third bar. So you can see subtle differences there. But the major trend here is the, the difference between the first bar and the lower two bars, right? Would that be some, something that you would conclude with high confidence? if you were to look at the histogram, 
that would be you know not uh, that would be more difficult to conclude the same uh, finding over there so this is the utility of binning if there is a big trend you will catch that by you know by 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 rebinning the, the the complex you know interval variables you don't have to look at this many bars right you only need to catch the trend but does it always work if there's a curvilinear relationship you may miss the trend right so um but it it does provide you a tool for for the for for, for the question in the homework about you know you need to look at every variable and determine whether it's related to churn uh, by looking by generating some graphs. Uh, if you deal with the uh, interval, it might be hard. If you generate those many bars, it's hard to conclude. But with fewer bars, it's easier to conclude, right? So I hope this is helpful. Um, so that this would conclude the demo session.